you know first I want to say this video is not meant whatsoever to embarrass my dad no uh, I love my dad very much you know he has his ways now first of all when it comes to radio me and my dad uh, were perfect father and son anyway uh, when I was about 13 my dad says uh, you want to learn the Morse code together now we now I grew up in 1976 I grew up in the CB radio craze the CB radio craze was it was heavy you know the CB radio craze was fun now my dad said this CB radio is fun but my dad says why don't you go get your ham radio license it's gonna take study you got to go pass a, a federal exam now the test uh, back then was more difficult than what it is today anyway you know my dad was a typical father at, at father and son and you know always put always want me to get it first he said I'll get my license after you get your license my dad told me so he got me the study material and so uh, we learned the Morse code together in 1976 when I was 13. And we both became experts in it. In 1980, I went in to take my federal exam. And I became a licensed ham radio operator, 1980. And I had my ham radio license, which is federal. I had my ham radio license before I had a driver's license. I got my driver's license in 81, but I was a licensed ham radio operator in 1980. Now, back in those days, you had to know the Morse code. You could not get your license without the Morse code. Anyway, anyway, I had to wait a, a week to 10 days, and the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, federal government from Washington, D.C., they mailed me my license in the mailbox. A week to 10 days, I got my license. Had to sign it. You know, I was excited. But my dad was excited a hundred times over. Which made him a little hyper. Which later on created a little problem. Well, first of all, before I go into that. My dad built me a real nice desk. Bought me some radio equipment. And my ham shack was my bedroom. Anyway, now, first of all, when I get on the radio or use a computer, I like to be alone. I don't mind somebody in a room with me if you're quiet. You can talk a little bit. Now, my dad, I sat at my desk. My dad sat on my bed. And he had a table of paper and some pencils. And we, as I, you know, I've talked around the world. As I talked around the world, copied code, he did too. But I was the one licensed. I was the one licensed, and I was the one only allowed to use the radio. And I've got QSL cards, in case you don't know what that is. That's confirming contact. So let's say, for example, I talked to somebody in Germany. They mail me a card with their picture and call sign. To confirm our conversation. I've got QSL cards from Australia, Germany, every country you can think of. Japan, you know, South America, way before YouTube. Oh, I've been around the, I've been uh, communicating around the world way before YouTube. YouTube is nothing to me. It wouldn't even thought of yet. <laughs> Anyway, uh, my dad would sit there. Now, back in those days, if he was a licensed ham radio operator, one of the government's regulations, you had to keep a log, L-O-G. And my dad being hyper and excitement because his son was now a licensed ham radio operator made me nervous. So nervous, my first entry first several entries into my log I screwed up the timestamp I screwed up now I'm worried that 
the I don't know if you mail them in back then or the government come knocking on your door and they will and they will inspect back in those days they dropped the log requirements now it's just recommended but back then you had to keep a log and you had to have your log ready for inspection by the federal government so how could I prove that was all an accident my dad just made me too nervous I love my dad and I'm glad he was in there with me but he was excited because his son me I was a new licensed ham radio operator and it was a million 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 times more fun than CB ever thought of being so I, ha I had to get out of it during the day I got on the radio when my dad went to bed what I regret in life I wish I'd spoke up and told my dad <laughs> can you be a little quieter <laughs> you know uh, he was just excited but that excitement caused me to screw up and I worried about it I don't know what the penalties were back then ten thousand dollar fine a year in jail prison I don't know you got to remember the log was mandatory if you use a licensed ham radio operator in 1980 so that worry and my dad being overexcited got me out of the hobby during the day I could only operate when my dad went to bed around midnight or a little earlier I usually would wait till midnight get on it two or three hours now I wish I told my dad to calm her down, lay off the coffee. He didn't mean any harm, he just being a typical father. But what 17 year old doesn't get nervous like that? And to this day, 40 years later, I don't like anybody around me when I'm on a computer and or radio. If you're gonna be in a room with me, you can talk, but monitor yourself. Don't make me nervous. Don't get hyper. What's the word I'm looking for? Don't get over hyper. Let me do it in peace. I don't mind you being there with me, beside me. Oh, my dad didn't mean any harm by it. He was just excited for his son. <sighs> but caused me to screw my log up. And not do it during, not uh, operate the radio during the day. So I just got out of the hobby, and I hate that. I'm going. I'm going back in. I'm going to renew my license. But when I operate radio, if you're ever in a room with me, it's okay to talk, but monitor yourself. Just don't make me nervous, okay?